Hey, everybody. Okay, here is the lecture on body direction and areas and regions and the cell. So buckle up. Let's get ready to go. I'm going to share my screen. And we are going to get started. And we're going to make this like a slideshow, make it easier for you guys to see. Okay. So first of all, we're going to define anatomy and physiology. Anatomy is the study of body structure. And to break it down even more, you have gross anatomy, structures that you can see with your eyes. And then there's microscopic anatomy that requires the use of a microscope. Physiology is the study of body functions, like how the anatomy works. And patho, remember patho, it's broken. Pathophysiology is the study of disorders, okay? Oops, went too far. So body direction and areas. Oh, went too far. Here we go. Oops. I'm going to get out of this. And let's go back up here. Okay, body direction and areas. So last night I talked a little bit about it. The anatomic or anatomical position is really the correct grammar. And what that is is the body standing erect, facing forward, arms at sides, and palms facing forward, just like this little guy, okay? That is the anatomical position, and you all should know that and be able to describe it with words, okay? All right. Now let's talk about body directions, areas, and planes, okay, and regions. When we talk about body planes, imagine if you were slicing the body down this way. You have your frontal, right? Frontal plane, sagittal plane, which is slicing the body down the middle this way, and your transverse or horizontal plane, which is slicing the body this way. So you're slicing the body in half with all three of them, just a different way, okay? Body directions, areas, and regions. Let's talk about body position. Things are either internal or external. They are either central, which is close to the core, or peripheral, farther away from the, tr the trunk or the torso. Parietal versus visceral. Visceral is deep, parietal is more superficial. Supine versus prone. Supine is lying on your back. Prone is lying on your stomach. And deep versus superficial. Pretty self-explanatory. But when you look at this picture, you can see when we're talking about directions, superior, right, up. Inferior, down. Anterior or ventral is the front. Posterior or dorsal is the back. Medial is towards the center of the body. Lateral is towards the outside of the body. And proximal is close to the core. And distal is farther away from the core. Make sure you know those. Okay. Then you have body cavities. You need to know these too. Okay. Of the body cavities, you have the dorsal cavity, which is the back, which contains the cranial cavity and the spinal cavity. Then you have the ventral or the anterior cavity, which has two smaller cavities, the thoracic, it's where your lungs are, uh, lungs and heart, and your abdominal, which entails all of your abdominal organs, your intestines, your stomach, your spleen, liver, pancreas, and all that good stuff, okay? Make sure you know these, okay? The body cavities, all right? Body directions with regard to the abdomen, Typically, we divide the abdomen one of two ways. We can divide it into quadrants, and quad means four, right? So when you're looking at the person, that is the left upper quadrant and the right upper quadrant, right lower, left lower. Or you can break it down into nine separate areas or regions. Epigastric, right in the middle. Umbilical, near the umbilicus, which is your belly button. Hypogastric, or suprapubic, down low. Right hypochondriac left hypochondriac, right lumbar, left lumbar, right iliac, and left iliac, okay? So just know these four to get started and know epigastric, know where that is, okay? And next, body directions also talks about laterality. So if we say bilateral, both sides. Unilateral, one side. Ipsilateral, same side. Contralateral, opposite sides. Make sure you know those. And that's it for body direction. We're going to move on to the cell. Now it's getting into some good stuff.
So the cell is the basic, smallest basic unit of the body that's alive, okay? When you put cells together, they form tissues, right? And tissues are made from cells of the same type and structure. Excuse me. Organs are formed when tissues come together. And systems are made up of organs. Sounds pretty self-explanatory. When we talk about cells, there are certain things that cells are able to do. Cells are able to manage metabolism, and they can perform anabolism or catabolism, which we'll talk about in a minute. Excuse me. They have the ability to be contractile. They have contractility. They have conductivity, irritability, and they can reproduce. So let's do one of these at a time. So when we talk about metabolism, metabolism is the set of chemical reactions that just keep you alive, just you're alive. Catabolism is breaking down large molecules and the smaller ones, releasing energy. Anabolism is building up, building up molecules from smaller ones that requires energy. So a good example is when you eat food, the digestion process is really catabolic, catabolism, because it breaks down the complex food molecules into smaller components like glucose, sugar, and your body uses that energy to build new muscle tissue. That's the anabolic process. So catabolism is breaking something down to release energy. Anabolism is building something up, and that requires energy. So make sure you know this stuff. I'm going to highlight all of this. And there's a great picture of the cell. So the cell looks like this. In the center of the cell is the nucleus or the brain of the cell. And then inside the nucleus, you, well, outside the nucleus is the nuclear membrane. Inside the nucleus is your genetic material, the stuff that makes you, you, your DNA. Um, and then the nucleolus is in there too. So that's really the brains of the operation. And then down here, this little guy, mitochondrian, and you'll see they're, they're kind of scattered throughout. They're the ones that you really need to focus on because they make energy. They make ATP. And that's going to be important down the road. Okay? So what is in the nucleus of a cell? Well, your chromosome, that's your hereditary information. You get 23 from your mom and 23 from your dad. And that makes 46 chromosomes altogether. In the nucleoli, you have your DNA and your RNA. Right, The DNA and RNA is all about um, genetic information. It's like code for a computer, right? So it's a messenger that duplicates um, the genes. The RNA duplicates the genes for the DNA, and that's how you become who you are. It's all about you know the transcription of heredity. Mitochondria. It's also called the powerhouse of the cell. Super important. The mitochondria makes ATB, which is adenosine triphosphate. We're going to get in a little more detail about that in a minute, but you must know that the mitochondria is the powerhouse, powerhouse of the cell, and it makes ATP, okay? And then these are all the other parts of the cell. I'm not going to get into great detail about them. Um, you really need to know more about the, the um, understanding the ATP, the adenosine trifosphate. Um, just to kind of go over RNA and DNA. So RNA is ribonucleic acid, and it's only got one strand. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. It's two strands, okay? So the RNA takes the message from the DNA and transports it to the little ribosomes in the cytoplasm of the cell. So it's all about transferring the message. Like here, this is who we're building. We're building Miss Mary or anybody else, right? So the RNA tells us how to build it and the DNA is what builds it. I guess that's an easy way to explain it. Okay. Um, you do need to know the difference between mitosis and meiosis. Okay. So mitosis is when cells divide into two exact genetic duplicates. Think about an egg. So when mommy and daddy love each other very much and you get pregnant, the sperm and the egg meet, boom. And now it's conception. It's a fertilized egg. Well, that egg has to start to divide, right? To get to turn into a zygote and then a fetus and a baby, okay? So mitosis is the process of cells dividing into two exact genetic duplicates, okay? Make sure you know that. Meiosis, that's cell division that produces eggs and spore sperm. It only has half of the chromosomes you need, right? So meiosis 
has so the cell division so you have eggs or sperm and each has 23 chromosomes but when they fuse together it creates a whole new organism that has 46 chromosomes right so that's what meiosis is um we're not going to get into enzymes so is the following statement true or false? Do body cells reproduce through meiosis? No, they reproduce through mitosis. That's how body cells reproduce. Cells, when they go through mitosis, they make two. It's just like there's one of me and now boom, now there's two of me. Your worst nightmare. No, I'm kidding. That's how they, they replicate or reproduce themselves. Um, tissues. We're going to talk about the different kinds of tissues. And the different kinds would be epithelial tissue is the first one. That's the thing that protects your body. Um, it's found in um, your taste buds, um, in your soft soft epithelial tissue, in your esophagus, in your trachea. Um, very important. You have, oh, look, even more epithelial tissue. Um, and they break it down into simple, stratified, transitional, ciliated, or goblet shaped. I'm not going to get into all of that, okay? Just know what epithelial tissue is. Then you have connective tissue. Connective tissue is the tissue that anchors, like supports or binds things together. You know, how, how does, how do your organs kind of stay where they're supposed to be? It provides support. Connective tissue provides support for body structures. Okay. And it's broken down also into different types of connective tissue. And I will let you know that Blood is a form of connective tissue, right? Soft connected connective tissue examples would be your areola or adipose, which is fat. Those are types of connective tissue. And then hard connective tissue would be your bones and your cartilage, okay? Which makes sense. Then you have muscle tissue. Muscle tissue is classified in different ways too. <laughs> so, and it's classified by either its function, its appearance, or whether it's voluntary or involuntary. OK, so you really need to know function and you really need to know voluntary or involuntary. Those two, those things are important. So function, we have muscle tissue that's either skeletal muscle tissue, smooth muscle tissue, and then there's cardiac muscle tissue only found on the heart. And then all of those are voluntary or involuntary. OK, then we have nerve tissue. Nerve tissue sends electrical signals back and forth throughout the body, right? And you have neurons, which are the cells, the nerve cells that make up nerve tissue, and they respond to different kinds of activity. You have two types of neurons, sensory, afferent, and motor, efferent, okay? And those you're gonna need to know. Sensory is when you put your hand close to something hot and you pull away, that's your sensory tissue, your sensory neurons sending a message to your brain saying it's hot. Your motor neurons, the effort ones, pulled your hand away, made your hand move, okay? So the sensory are the ones that feel and the motor are the ones that move. Make sense? And that's where we're going to kind of stop with this lecture so that we can have an question and answers. We'll continue on in a little while. Let me stop my share. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, question and answers. We're going to come next, and then we will get to the rest of the lecture. All right. Bye.